As soon as I found out about these sunglasses with a screen built into them, I obsessively watched every single YouTube video I could find talking about them. I'm not kidding, this was like a two week process. I think I have a problem. It seems like XR glasses are the new Raycons of YouTube because they're being given out like candy to 90% of the YouTube population to talk about them. But I bought this pair of X Real Airs off of eBay for $280 with my own money. This is not a sponsored video. Nobody is paying me to talk about them. So we're gonna see if they're actually worth the cost of admission. I was going on a little bit of a road trip to Orlando and I figured these would be the perfect companion. But before we get into what these glasses actually are, it's important to note that you'll find a handful of these things from a number of different manufacturers. But outside of some minor specification or comfort differences, they all work the same way and offer similarly spec products. It really just kind of comes down to price and preference. So what the hell are XR glasses? Well, these glasses, at their most simplest, are a screen with a USB-C output. That's it. This means that when you plug them directly into a device, like a phone or a laptop, there's no option to fix the screen in place or change the screen size. So when you move your head, the screen moves with it one to one. This leaves you only moving your eyes to see different areas of the screen, which can settle in some fatigue really easily. I don't think we really think about this very consciously when using a normal display, but think of driving a car and only using your eyes to check your mirrors or your radio and never moving your head at all from this fixed position. The only options you have to change from the glasses themselves is the brightness or whether the screen is on and off, which limits your ability and kind of takes away from the magic of these glasses. But if you want more than the standalone experience and you want these glasses to actually feel like the product they're advertising, you'll need one of these, one, one of these right here. This is what Xreal calls the beam or what Rokid calls the station or what Vitcher calls the headband. They all have their own things. This acts as the computing device for your glasses and gives them the augmented reality experience that you're thinking of when using these glasses. You plug your source device into the beam, the beam acts as a pass-through, and then the final result is sent to the glasses. This gives you features like body anchor and smooth follow for the display in front of you, completely eliminating that eye fatigue we previously mentioned. You can even change the screen size and distance of how close the screen actually appears to your face. By default, the display kind of works like an optical illusion. If you're close to a wall, it looks like a small monitor, but if you're looking out into the distance, it looks like a theater screen. With the beam, you can also put the display in the corner of your vision, making it easier to view a video while you're cooking or walking around the house. Something that would be pretty much impossible to do without the beam, in my opinion, because the fixed display without the beam definitely gave me a little bit of motion sickness. The Beam is also just a little Android box, so if you really just wanna put some streaming apps directly to the device itself, you can probably load them directly up to this if you're up for tinkering a little bit. You also have the option for streaming your devices like your phone or your laptop to the Beam via AirPlay or screen mirroring, which didn't always work the best, to be honest. I could use it with YouTube OK, which is pretty much all I watch, but when it comes to any movie or streaming apps, it won't currently work at all through AirPlay due to the HDCP restrictions. When it comes to streaming the video from my laptop, the feed was just so delayed that it was unusable, but with a direct connection, it was fine going through the beam. Speaking of direct connection, you'll be really happy to know that if you wanna use this with your Switch, it's as easy as plugging it in directly to the beam. Since the beam is self-powered, the Switch kind of just acts like it's docked when you plug it up to the beam, which I was really happy about. I played a lot of Bomber and Minecraft on the way home. And this goes for pretty much every USB-C connection with video out like an iPhone 15 or a Steam Deck. But if you have an HDMI powered device, it gets a little bit more tedious. If you want HDMI, you'll need an HDMI to USB-C adapter, which also needs to be powered. In the case of the X-Reel, their proprietary adapter also has a built-in battery bank. So not only will you need the beam to be charged, you'll also need the HDMI adapter to be charged. That being said, I did use my beam off and on my four hour trip comfortably without ever killing the battery, but it is just one more barrier to entry if you wanna use an HDMI powered device. The glasses don't come with an adapter or the beam, so you're really gonna feel it in your wallet if you want the most compatibility possible. Hell, I'd even argue that if you want these glasses, you're gonna want to to spend the extra money to get the beam or whatever its equivalent is, depending on the glasses you get. If these glasses could just adjust the screen size or give you that smooth follow or body anchor out of the box, it'd be a no-brainer. But since it relies on the beam to give you that spatial computing, you basically need it to use this device comfortably. When everything works, it's genuinely a fantastic experience, but with the glasses by itself, 
It feels more like a gimmick. So who are these glasses for? Well, if you travel a lot and you're looking for a more comfortable way to enjoy some entertainment or get some work done, these are great. Despite the fact that you just get more privacy from having the screen directly in front of your face and nowhere else, you can just sit back with the theater screen in front of you and not strain your neck, hunching over a laptop when you wanna get some work done. The two OLED panels that they use in this, even in the cheapest versions of these X-Reels, look fantastic. Honestly, I was shocked by how sharp and vibrant the display was despite it technically technically being a projected image. I saw some people complain about blurry edges on some of these glasses, but I spent a few hours editing on this thing and everything was clear and easy to use. Granted, this was thanks to the beam locking the image in place because trying to edit with only using my eyeballs to look around got extremely old very quickly. So, downsides. First off, it's the price. There's no getting around it. This is going to price out the average person that just wants to pick one of these up out of curiosity. For the cheapest spec that I have and the beam, you're already spending PS5 or 55 inch TV money. If you're looking to buy these with a Switch or a Steam Deck just for the fun, you're already spending more than the handheld just on the glasses, including the beam. And that's not an easy pill to swallow no matter how you look at it. This is bleeding edge tech in its infancy and the price reflects that. You know what else reflects? The mirrors in this thing. The magic in these glasses are also what remind you that these aren't just a normal pair of glasses. They stick out a bit further than normal and when the screen isn't being used, you can definitely notice the line where the mirror ends and the lenses end. This isn't really a big deal when they're being used, but it definitely keeps these from just feeling like a normal pair of glasses. I get that the point of these aren't to just be worn like a normal pair of glasses, but I feel like that's worth mentioning. Also, you can forget about using these things in any sort of daylight, at least without the cover on them. The screen will get completely washed out and you won't be able to view it. The pro version of these, as well as a few other competitors, have a built-in dimming function, which is actually really cool solution to this, but it also means, you guessed it, more money. There's also no headphone jack, so if your device doesn't support it, you'll have to resort to Bluetooth. The Xtrails have an app called Nebula for the Mac that gives you the ability to use a spatial display without the beam, including support for multiple monitors. There's also a Windows app that's still in development, but that started like a year ago, so I'm not really holding my breath on it. You also have a Nebula app for Android, but I honestly have no idea how that one works. Built-in speakers on these things, they're serviceable, but they bleed a lot. Anybody around you are gonna hear it. Of course, I'm talking about the base model X-Real Airs. Apparently the Air 2s and the Air 2 Pros have improved speakers. But in my case, if you wanna actually hear this at a listenable level, if you have somebody sitting next to you, they're gonna hear what you're listening to. All that being said, this won't be replacing your TV or your monitor setup, but it may just replace your mobile device's screen. These things are awesome for video and gaming entertainment, and they're also fairly usable for productivity. I'll leave an Amazon affiliate link for the X-Real Airs that I've been using in this video, as well as the Beam down there in the description if it's still down there. Any Anyways, tell me what you guys think. I'll see you in the next one.